and I'll just be a pawn one. All right. Can you see? <clears throat> can you see my PowerPoint up? Yes, sir. I can see it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in then and see if we can get going here. Looks okay. We're ready. Yes, sir. Okay, so I did have a question, Eric. We're gonna have to edit this part out, but I did have a question. So, do you see? Do you see my? Do you see me also in my camera and my PowerPoint, or do you just see my PowerPoint? Personally, I see you on a small screen, and I see the PowerPoint. But sometimes the recorder, I, I don't know what the recording will look like. Okay, well, I'll assume that you can see both. Then I believe the recording catches the PowerPoint. From the ones I've seen, there's always something on the screen. Yeah, there's something on the screen. Um, the reason we mute our, our video is because the technology grabs whoever is speaking and makes them full screen, and, and that's what the recorder records. So I mute mine. Cade mutes his. Um, when you share a screen, I'm pretty sure all we're going to see is the PowerPoint and hear your voice on the, on the recording. Okay, well, th there's only one time I'm going to hold up where, where I've done one of these practice ones so they can see how I've marked it up. So if that's, um, if that's not, I can, I can always, I can always scan a picture in and, and add it to the PowerPoint that we send out to him if it doesn't show up. How about that? Yeah, that'll, that'll work. And if you want to show okay. it, just, uh, stop sharing your screen and then, and then put it up there against the camera at that time. Oh yeah, I'll do that. Okay. All right. You ready to do this? All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the webinar for the Louisiana State FFA Food Science Contest. This is specifically the one for product development. Um, just a little bit of background. I have to tell you, when I came out of college, I, I knew absolutely nothing about food science. I did know some meat stuff, but I didn't know anything about food science. And now today, um, this is product development is probably if I had one single unit that this was the one thing that I could say is my favorite thing to teach. Uh, the, the, the two or three weeks I spent with my freshman on product development is probably the, the thing that I, I just have a blast with every year. So here are the parts of the, of the competition, actually, uh, the six parts. And I have the product development, which is what this uh, webinar uh, video is going to be all about. <clears throat> the general knowledge exam, food safety pictures, customer complaint letters, the triangle tests, and aromas. Okay, so let's jump into product development. You need to read the scenario carefully. And, and I, I can't emphasize that enough. Read the scenario carefully. I, every time we've come out of a national competition, I've had our uh, kids miss something. There was something that was in the reading that they missed. And so read it carefully. Who's your target market? What are you trying to sell? Where in the grocery store, convenience store, are you going to find this product? Why are you choosing the ingredients you are? You need to make decisions. So who's your target market? Why do you, why do you need to know that? Because that's going to be your advertising. Go, go just walk through the, the cereal aisle of the grocery store and tell me or tell yourself, tell, tell someone, go or just go walk through there and look to see what are the different advertisements on the front of those boxes. I know Frosted Flakes have a much different um, advertisement on the front than, say, Special K, which is a, another type of Corn Flakes. So go go check it out. Go look at it. Kids, students need to have an idea about marketing because I'm, we're going to talk about what the law says. What are the what are the requirements on that box, on the front of that box? But you're you got to hit those, obviously, 
but you also have to have uh, you also have to know how to market that product because you're not going to put Tony the Tiger on a product you're trying to market to um, 30 year olds or or grandparents. You're you're gonna you're not you're not gonna put um, you're not gonna put a health statement generally speaking on a kid's cereal. So who's your target market? Who are you trying to get to? What are you trying to sell? You know, can is the rep? You need to be able to represent what it is that you're trying to sell. Why are you choosing the ingredients you are? What's what? What is the point of, of those ingredients? And um, if you're if you're picking organic ingredients, is it because they're they're the only ingredients that match, or are you trying to do an organic type of uh, product? And if you're doing that, are you gonna are you gonna market them as organic? Making decisions. <clears throat> this one is students really need to make decisions. How you know you need to you need to settle it and you need to move on. A lot of times in product development, there's no right or wrong answer per se, but you need to make those decisions and you need to you, you need to be able to defend what you've done. Read the scenario carefully, very carefully. So let's talk about labeling. Um, so you need to know the law, but labeling, there are two things, uh, two, two things that you have to know. There is the principal display panel or the PDP. Um, the PDP requires to have two things on it, the statement of identity and the net weight. The only two things that have to be there. We're going to talk about some of the things that go on with that, but the the principal display panel just has to have, the law says you have to have two things on there, statement of identity and the net weight. So what's all the rest of the box used for? Well, in some cases, um, there's nothing else on the box. Look at a great value Cheerios or great, excuse me, toasted oat cereal, and it's blank because the, the benefit of bu bu buying a great value product is that it's cheap. But most of the other the time they use that for marketing. The other the other thing that you have to have is the information panel. I'm going to say it probably again in a few minutes. But looking at the PDP, the PDP is the is the is the face that is facing the consumer, and the information panel is always to the right. And I have I don't know hundred. 200 boxes and cans and labels that <clears throat> I've collected over the years. And I say that and students go, they give you that, that look and you go, not nah, check it. And so I just, we have them all out on the table and they just start picking them up and they find the, the principal display panel or the PDP. And I say, turn it to the right, look to the right. It's always to the, to the customer's right. It's always to the consumer's right. So the information panel requires four things on the information panel. Um, manufacturer information, allergens, ingredients list, and nutrition facts. And then, so these are the things we're going to be looking for. And then there's also going to be questions that for your team to answer in the product development. All right, before we get rolling, I want to tell you that all of the stuff that I've learned from about, about labeling, I originally came from a, a lecture in 2007 that Dr. David Jackson uh, gave at a uh, ag teacher conference. And so I got some of a, a lot of that information from there. And then uh, I've also recently found a food labeling guidelines at the uh, FDA website and I've, I've given you that also and I would encourage you to go through that uh, it's a it's a pretty neat interactive um, class I guess would be the best way to say it so the PDP um, requires two things it requires a statement of identity and net weight statement of identity let's handle that one first the statement of identity has to be at least half the size of the largest print on the box or package. I, here's what I do. I just hand them a ruler and say, make me a pile of these 150 labels 
make me a pile on one end of the table that's legal, according to this, make me a pile that's illegal, according to this. So half the size, the largest print on the package. So <clears throat> the statement identity, let's take Cheerios, for example. Um, and, and Cheerios is kind of a funny one, so I'm going to keep coming back to it. But Cheerios is the example for Cheerios is the Cheerios is not the statement of identity. That's the that's the brand name. That's the the product name. The statement of identity for Cheerios is toasted uh, whole toasted whole oat cereal. That's that's what the statement of identity is. For there's one that um, my kids used to get when they were little at uh, Walmart. The little they would call them fruit smiles. I don't know what a fruit smile is, but the statement of identity says it's naturally and artificially flavored fruit snacks. So pick them up, look at them. You'll generally find what the statement of identity is. It, the statement of identity is just what it actually is because who knows what a fruit smile is? I don't know what a fruit smile is, but I do know what a naturally or artificially flavored fruit snack is. So that's the statement of identity. Um, if you really think about it, What's a Cheerio? Um, well, I mean, honestly, if you were, I don't know, coming from another country, it would be pretty hard to know what a, what the description of a Cheerio is. Well, the, the statement of identity says it's a toasted whole oat cereal. Okay, I understand what that is. But the statement of identity has to be at least half the size, the largest print on the package. A usual common name or non-leading description. A fanciful name is okay if commonly misunderstood by consumers. So here's where Cheerios, if you look at the box, their statement of identity is nowhere near half the size. But the way they get by with that, the way they get by with that is because even the great value stuff is considered to be, even the great value stuff is considered to be, everybody says Cheerios. They're the off-brand Cheerios. And um, anyway, so that's that's how Cheerios gets by with it. Um, so, but generally speaking, you can't use a fanciful name. So it has to be, the statement of identity has to be what, what, what it is. Toasted whole grain oat cereal. Um, can't use a new name if a common name is available. Uh, must describe the form that it is. If there's multiple forms, holes, halves, chunks, slice, think about tomatoes, think about peaches and pears. Um, I'm probably pizza. Uh, so the statement of identity must describe the form if there's multiple forms available. And you must have the word imitation if it resembles another food but otherwise uh, nutritionally inferior. So if it contains a lesser amount of essential nutrients. Here's one. Hey, can uh, this, you give an example this, on that, Chad, on the imitation piece? Um, yes, ham. So if you add, if you add more than 10% water to a ham product, it becomes an imitation product. That, that's the that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, juices are handled uh, very specially. And here's the question I always ask my high school students. Who's using juices? Who's drinking juices? And they think, and they think, and they think, and they think. And they come up with little kids. That's right. Yes, absolutely, positively. So if it has the appearance of juice, if it looks like juice, um, there's only one way you can label it as juice. If it's 100% juice, if it's not 100% juice, then you have to use another term. You cannot say juice. <clears throat> so you can use beverage, you can use drink, you can use cocktail, you can use diluted. The only way you can use juice is if it is 100% juice. And I will tell you, juicy juice is 100% juice. Um, and so I have one of those in my in my collection of things um, for students to see that. But I also have Sunny D. 
Sonny D is not a juice. It may have some juice in it, but it's not a juice. It has to be 100% to be called a juice. It is, if, if I, I believe, it is called a juice-like drink. That, that would cover the statement of identity. Um, an orange juice drink. But you can't, an orange, an orange drink. You go pick up some of those that are, you know, you're, you're wondering, huh, that kind of looks like a juice. And it will, it'll have drink beverage. It will not have juice on the front of any of those. Um, if it looks like a juice, you have to declare the percent of juice in it. And it needs to be, that needs to be near the top of the PDP. <clears throat> you, what does look like mean? I mean, you know, is Gatorade look like a juice? Well, look like means it has a, because of a label statement or appearance or flavor or pictures on the label. Um, that's what look like. But this is, this is one that they don't mess around with. If it's not 100% juice, you don't call it juice. But I encourage you to go look at uh, even even uh, V8 is not called juice. <clears throat> it is called a beverage because it's not 100% juice. And so uh, go go check it out. So what we've talked about right now, and I want to I want to back up here to labeling law so we don't we don't get out of out of track of what we're doing. We're working on the the principal display panel. <clears throat> And specifically, we're working on the statement of identity. So the statement of identity, half the size largest, you can't use a fanciful name if there's a, um, if, if there's a commonly used, um, or fan, excuse me, you have to use the usual or common name, non-leading, non-misleading description, um, describe the form, and you can't use juice unless it's 100% juice. Net weight statement. So this is the second part. There are two things that are required on the PDP. The statement of identity is one. The net weight statement is the second one. <clears throat> it has to be in the bottom 30% of the PDP. Um, and I, again, I, I just tell, uh, tell my students, just pick up these boxes and labels and go see if you can find them somewhere outside of the bottom 30%. The type size depends on the area of the PDP. Minimum is one sixteenth of an inch up to a half inch generally. You must have U.S. customary and metric units. You must have that. You must have U.S. customary and metric units. This is one one memorization your students are going to have to be able to convert from grams to ounces or pounds. Here's how I tell my kids, my students to do it. One pound equals 454 grams. If you can, if you know that, you should be able to figure out the other ounces if you, if you need to. Um, so that's, that's how I do it. You may do it some other way, but you have to have U.S. customary and then a parentheses behind it, metric units. You can't crowd the net weight statement with artwork. You have to be able to read it. You have to be able to see it. And and there are some that, that have really busy pictures that uh, are make the net weight statement difficult difficult to to read. Um, you can't add qualifying terms. And this one I always try to excuse me, did somebody ask a question? I see you plug it from your laptop. I want to make sure you saw that pop up. Sorry about that. So you can't add qualifying terms. You can't say two big ounces. And I, I always do like, you know, I do it so it's uh, loud and funny and the kids all, they all giggle about it. And then we, you know, we go looking to see if somebody has, has added in, you know, qualifying terms. You can't say it's the biggest half because, you know, well, technically a half is 50%. There's no bigger, it's 50%. So you can't say two big ounces. It's two ounces. What's a big ounce? There's no such thing. So it's two ounces. Um, you For this year, for sure, grams to ounces or pounds and back. You need to be able to do back and forth. 
is um, what what you will need to do for 2018. Um, you won't fluid ounces that kind of thing will not be required this year, for sure. All right, information panel. So there are two things on the on the on the, the, the PDP. There are two things: statement of identity and net weight. The information panel requires four things. You have manufacturer data, allergens, ingredients list, and nutrition facts. So the information panel, <clears throat> manufacturer information must must state the name and the place of the business. If another firm makes the product, statement must be qualified with manufactured for or distributed by. So if you look at great value, it will say generally distributed by Walmart, Inc., um, was it Fayetteville, Arkansas, whatever the city is. Um, the place of business must have a street, city, and zip code. Do you have to have a phone number? The technical answer to that is no. You do not have to put a phone number as long as long as the local phone book carries the phone number. If you could pick up a phone book and find it, then you do not have to put it on there. So then I asked my students, but should you put it on there? If there's a problem in this box, <clears throat> who do you want them calling? So that's something you can talk about. But technically, you don't have to put a phone number on there as long as you can pick up, pick it up. And as long, and most of them, um, they have customer complaint line and that kind of thing. But where you see the manufacturer data, lots and lots of boxes and, and labels only have the name of the name of the the company, the street, city, and zip code. The information panel. Uh, so there are four things. The first one was manufactured data. The second one was allergen labeling. Um, the Food Allergen Labeling Consumer Protection Act of 2004 is one of the things. Here's the here's how important these things are. Um, <clears throat> some of these are deadly, in, in all honesty. So a story was told to me by a food scientist out of uh, the University of Nebraska Lincoln, and they told the story that a couple was engaged to be married. One of them had a peanut allergy. The one that had the peanut allergy went on business somewhere, flew somewhere. And the morning they were to fly back, their fiance ate a Snickers. Eight o'clock in the morning. It was very early. Twelve hours later, they picked up the, the person with the peanut allergy. And the one that had eaten the Snickers kissed, kissed their, kissed their fiance, and their fiance died in the airport of anaphylactic shock. How important are food allergies? People die from. You have to put it on there. You have to let them know that it's there. Um, you can have a may contain statement if the ingredient doesn't doesn't specify it. If you go look at candy bars, a lot of times you will see a this product was made in a. This product was made in a uh, facility that that handles or uses, and it may say peanuts, tree nuts, may give the specific tree nut. Um, so if you if you are, if there are specific tree nuts in there, then you have to you have to say which ones there are: almonds, pecans, coconuts, walnuts. The type of fish that's in it, the type of crustacean or shellfish in it, those all things will all have to be declared. <clears throat> you have to make sure that they know it. Um, I, the funny one to me is uh, coconuts. I always have to, I, you know, when I tell my freshman, well, you know, let's name some tree nuts. They get the pecans, they get the almonds. But I say, what about coconuts? And they look at me funny because um, coconuts are almost treated as a fruit i guess and so they kind of look funny and then they go oh okay so anyway peanuts the number one uh, food allergen in the united states got to declare it information panel so we've talked about manufacturer data we've talked about allergens information panel the ingredient list the ingredient list is on there in a very specific way it is descending order by weight not by volume by weight, which one's the heaviest? Descending order by weight. The type size is at least one sixteenth 
of an inch for the lowercase o. And I'm a ruler. Go measure stuff. Water added to a product is an ingredient. So in that ham example I, I told you, one of the ingredients would on the label would be water. You have to use common names like sugar. Don't use sucrose. And you no need to label trace ingredients if they are minor amounts and have no technical impact on the food. I may, may list ingredients with le less than or equal to 2% at the end of the label. The statement saying it contains 2% or less of 1.2% or less of whatever that is. But it's descending order by weight. Um, oops, went the wrong way. So, yeah, here we're still on ingredients. <clears throat> you can use and or for fats and oils. Preservatives, you have to use the common name plus the function. So, you put BHA slash BHT, you'll find that on a lot of them, and it should say to retard spoilage behind it. Spices or flavor, you can count, use the common name, or you can use spices. You can use flavor, natural flavor, artificial flavor. Um, colors, spices that are colors must use the common name or spice and color behind it. You must list certified colors, so you have to put red number 40. Here's why. My daughter, um, who is going to be 13 very soon, when she was a baby, when, well, a toddler, even up to uh, early elementary school, when she got a virus, some sort of flu, you know, get the get the cough, the whole thing coming on, her body would <clears throat> would become allergic to red dye number 40. It was she would get hives, get the whole thing if she took any medicine that had red dye number 40 in it. And so you have to list those things because people need to know what's what's actually in there. Ingredients list. What happens if you have an ingredient list, let's say pasta if you're putting pasta in something you have to put you have to do one of two things you have to put in parentheses behind behind the you say pasta and then right behind that you would um, put in parentheses and you would list the ingredients from the pasta or if you're making it yourself or if you want to do it, if you know the weights of all those things in the pasta, you can just incorporate those ingredients into your ingredients list. Generally speaking, you're, you, you'll be buying ingredients from other places. So if you're making, and today what we're going to talk about is, is a lasagna. If you're making a lasagna, you're probably buying the pasta from somewhere else. You're probably not producing the pasta in your, in your facility. So, that other place, wherever you're getting your pasta, is is going to give you an ingredients list in descending order by weight. And so what you would do is just put in parentheses behind that, the that that those ingredients. Uh, they that other company may not want to tell you uh, their exact formula, so they they're going to tell you their ingredients by order, but they may not want to tell you their exact formula for you to incorporate in your ingredients. Now, if you're producing, say, a summer sausage and you are using, I don't know, a spice mixture that you came up and mixed yourself, then instead of just, instead of saying, you know, summer sausage spice mixture, you could say it that way and print parentheses what's in there, or you could just incorporate it into the ingredients list in total. Um, so there's a couple of examples of this. But that's something that's a big one that kids miss a lot in these competitions is they forget that if they have pasta, pasta is made up of several things. You have to put parentheses and put that put that in there. Um, OK, nutrition facts panel. Here's the side by side comparison. And as you can see, here's the original label and the new label. We are going to use the new label. Now, the example that I have given and that Eric has sent out to everybody that example uses the old label. I will still train my students when I when I use that one originally. I will still train using the old label because it's really very very similar. There's not much difference between the two labels. They look a little different, but 
you do everything, all the procedures are the same. And so it's, it's not a big jump from one to the next, but we will be using the new label, period. Um, here's what's new and different on the new label from the old, if you want to know that, some highlights from that. Information panel. Uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to blank out all of these things. So that won't say how many servings per container. It won't say what the serving size is. I'm going to blank all of these. I'm going to get, uh, your, your students are going to be given a blank nutrition facts label. You do not have to memorize that. At nationals, you do. You memorize this, and we work as a, as a uh, team of four, and we, we memorize certain things. You're not going to have to do that at state. At state, I'm going to give you a blank one for you to put the new nutrition facts on. This, I, it, there's no, no reason at the state level, in my opinion, for you to have to memorize that. So you'll be given that. Um, you will be given the daily values based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Okay, here's the funny. Everybody wants to know what about the 2,000 calorie diet, and and students say, well, gosh, that's got a lot of calories in it. It's or it's got. You go back here and you say, well, there's a lot of fat, 10 percent fat. That's based on a 2,000 calorie diet. And if I understand the food scientist right at UNL, the the 2,000 calorie diet came. Because that's the calorie intake that a postmenopausal woman should have. That's not what a high school student should have. That's not what a middle-aged ag teacher should have, generally speaking. In fact, when I went through and did the, uh, there's a there's a place online you can do a USDA Super Tracker, and you can go in and and tell it your lifestyle, the whole thing, and it'll spit out what you're allowed each day, and then you can keep track of it. And we, we do that in class, and it's kind of fun. But even, even for a middle-aged ag teacher, I'm allowed, uh, I think it was 3,000 calories right in that neighborhood. Some of our high school students who are very active in sports and stuff, they may need 4,000 calories a day to, to keep, up their, uh, keep up their body. And so that that – Daily values are all based off of uh, postmenopausal women because they have the they have the lowest cal caloric intake needs, and so that's why we do it. Um, you will ex I will expect students to fill out the nutrition facts panel. So we're gonna give them the nutrition facts, give them the daily values, then they will be able to fill it out. There are some things that need to be in metric terms and percentages, and some things need to be only one. Now, I'm going to give them this blank. But as you can see, here's the metric terms. Here's the uh, percentages. But you get down to protein, well, you get down to total sugars, and it's only in metric, no percentages. You get down to protein, and it's only metric, no percentages. You get down to, to vitamin D, Anyway, here's the, you, you need to know which ones are, which ones require you to have the percents and which ones uh, just require you to have the metric values. That is the one thing you're going to have to learn. Okay, so calculations can come to you in either per gram basis or per 100 grams. Generally speaking, we see it on a per 100 grams basis. For 2018, I'm going to do a per gram basis because I, that's, it's easier. And I, it's, it's one less step. So I'm going to do a per gram basis. Um, probably 2019, we'll start going to 100, 100 grams. But it's just an adjustment of the decimal. But for this year, we're going to – I give you the – I will give you the uh, – the information on a per gram basis to make it a one step simpler. Here's that web training I was telling you about that uh, it's, it's, it's a great product development. Go click here and it, I don't know, I ran through it in about 40 minutes. Uh, if you're doing it for the first time and really thinking your way through it, um, it may take an hour. I don't know. I, I don't think it, I think they said an hour was what you should allow, but I, didn't think it would take that long for anybody. But anyway, um, and there's 
every every step of the way there's a little test uh for you to take so that you can see if you're if you're following along and uh, anyway i i did it and i learned something from it here's some more um resources for this i i believe this is the uh, these are just on on nutrition uh labeling so you can check them out here is it here's the example we sent out and i want to uh go through at least a little bit of this with you so you can see how to do it I, read read carefully and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you right now I'm going to show you right now just a second so I can see. But here is, here's the one I did. And you can see all the underlines and circles and all the things that are on here. So anyway, um, I that you are, make sure that you're reading this carefully. So big things. One of the things right here, sophisticated dinner kit. Sophisticated. That's a that's you know that's a key word. Just just thinking, we're targeting families, five to six servings. We want uh, when you read this and publish articles, the craft executives, moms don't want to spend all their time shopping and chopping, but they do want some involvement with a meal prep. They want to feel like they are uh, providing a home cooked meal for their for their families. Okay. So we're going to make a dinner kit, but who's our target market? Right away, we know that it's moms with families. And so they don't want to chop, do the shopping and chopping, as this article says, but they do want to feel like they're, they're making a home cooked meal. So it's not, we don't want to just have this. It's, this is a, this is a meal kit. This is not a prepared meal that you're just going to throw in the oven to warm up. That's a different thing. This is a fresh prep dinner kit. So um, we want to we want to include a unique feature, which means including meat. This is how we're going to differentiate these. Uh, we want about forty five minutes of prep time. Some preparation required. We want it to be a family meal and fresh ingredients. Okay, so. Whoop. Goodness, I gotta get my hands on the wrong thing. All right, so then you will need to decide if you're gonna package the choice in this in this particular product development is raw or cooked ground beef. That's it. There's no real right answer, but you need to, you know, you need to work your way through talking about this because there's real advantages to cooked ground book ground beef in there. The the big advantage is safety. You're going to have a safe product. There's huge disadvantages. You're going to have that warmed over flavor that you get, some of that oxidized flavor that you're going to get if you rewarm that. And then raw, you great advantage is that it tastes fresh. Real disadvantage is it's going to be, uh, it's going to, it's going to be a safety issue. We all know that. We're all worried about E. coli 157H7. And so, um anyway, we we want to uh you know we wanna we wanna make this decision. How are we gonna do this? I will tell you, honest to goodness, as we're as we're working our way through this with my freshmen, we will spend one whole class period talking this over and then we just vote. Because some of them will never come off their position and, and I I've done this for so long, I just play devil's advocate to whatever position they take, I take the opposite just um, and it's, it's, it's great to make them think their way through this. So I tell them there's no right answer, but you sure better be able to defend yourself. And so there are advantages, disadvantages to both serving size. Your serving size should be, uh, 235 grams with six servings per box. That turns out to be exact to 1,410 grams total. So now we already know what our net weight is. Ding, ding, ding. I see my serving size, 235 grams, six servings per box. I just brought it out here in the, in the corner uh, that my, my net weight for this box is going to be 1,410 grams. I'm not even going to worry about converting it yet. 
I'll get there. When I do, you know, whoever's working the PDP um, and putting that together, we'll get there. But I, I already know that. That we're going to create an appropriate PDP and an appropriate information panel. We're going to include all required elements, and we're going to. Oh, goodness. We're going to uh, also put the marketing and promotional elements. Use, uh, in this case, use the, the materials to assist you in your efforts. Okay, so nutrition facts. Make sure you show your math. If we can, if we can figure out your math, you'll get some points. Um, in addition, you're going to have a sketch of the PDP and the information panel. I want to know that your students understand uh, where the information panel goes. So this is a 3D drawing of a box. You're going to put PDP on one side, and you're going to point to where the where the the information panel should go. Um, your PDP should clearly communicate the nature of the product and its advantages, and then uh, again do the, the sketch. And so. I've, I've done a lot of underlining here, making sure I don't I don't miss something. Then you're going to answer the following questions. So there'll be two questions, and explain the rationale behind your selection, either raw or cooked ground beef, and identify what issues: safety, shelf life, product quality are associated with your choice. What kind of special packaging? Oh, this is one I come up. I tell them think about your packaging. How are you going to package this? To jump forward into it, you're going to definitely have to package the ground beef separately from the other things. You're going to have to put it in a separate container inside the package. Or if you're using a like a hard, rigid plastic container inside the package, then you need a separate compartment that's sealed off from the rest of it. Um, identify the safety concerns you need to address. And the procurement of the wrong ingredients. How do I know I'm getting good ingredients? In the processing or packaging of this product and in the distribution or sale of this product. So each team is going to submit a PDP drawing. Each team is going to submit an information panel drawing. And, and, and we will give you the nutrition fact sheet. Each, each is going to uh, submit a diagram of the package that shows where you would put the PDP and the information panel, and then you're going to answer questions. So each team is going to do four things, those four things. And that's what we're going to do at State this year also. We're going to do those four things. So you're going to have to submit a drawing. We'll give you, we will give you a uh, paper. With Eric and I have already talked, and we're going to give you markers and colored pencils, um, rulers. So they no stencils. It'll have to be freehanded. And I am not, I mean, it's pretty impressive, some of the artwork that goes on there, but I have no artistic ability. I screw up stick men. So it's not about the art to me. It's about the ideas. You know, I, I understand that not, not everybody's a, a graphic artist. So what I want to know is your ideas. Use the colors. Make it colorful. Make it look nice. Uh, I'm going to understand that it's, it's, you, you're not a professional artist. Some of you may have professional artists or kids that may be you know, as good as a professional artist. Great. But it's, it's, it's about the ideas on the package, not, not necessarily uh, the art. But it should, they should use uh, the colored pencils and markers and things so that it's, it, it looks nice. So let's talk about these. And this is going to be similar at nationals. Um, they give you a sheet that says per 100 grand, you have to decide what you have to build the product. You have to decide what's going in the product. You do, you, you weigh it out. You do the whole thing. We're not going to do that. I, that's, that's, uh, too much. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the percentages. Uh, and it, it may be, it may be like this, um, or it may be, I give you several different products and you have to put together um, different products to make it and then and then you'll you'll do the do the ingredients out of that but it's it's going to be very similar to this if your students can do this they'll be able to handle 
what we're doing this year at state. So in this case, they've given us by weight the percent of every one of our ingredients. And so the ground beef is going to be 17%. Now, in this instance, um, we're going to use the, let's see, we'll use raw because this is, that's what the answer here is showing. But so it's 17% ground beef. So this is a this is a math lesson. You have to move your decimal over two places. Take it time your serving size. Here's your serving size. Take it times your serving size, and so you end up with. And I have them right in this column right here or over here. Um, how much how much each one is, and this one is going to be the weight is thirty nine point nine five grams, and so you're going to write that here or in here. Then you're going to go down. You're going to do the you had to do basil up here, so you actually move this one over two places. So you take uh, 235 times 0. 0.00005, and basil ends up being uh, 0.1175 grams. And you go through and you do all of these, and when you get to the bottom, you should have, you added all these up correctly, you should have 235 grams total. That's your That's your check to make sure that you got that right. So... We're going to give you uh, each ingredient percentages that you would that you would use, and then students will have to pick up. I may not put the serving size here; it may just be, but it, it may only be on the in the reading back here, but it will be there. Um, and so they we're going to do this by serving because that's the that's the way nutrition facts are done. So the next thing you would do is you would take that 39.95 grams and you would take it times uh, 39.95 grams times 2.54 and you would end up with 101 and 47 kilocals. That, so here's the other thing you need to know about when we talk about calories, if you look on the packages, it's a capital C calories, which means kilocalories. So we're telling you what it is in calories, like on the package. So this this product is going to be 101.47 calories per serving, just in the raw ground, just in the raw, just in the raw ground beef. If you go down, you do the math on all these. Here's your weights. Do the multiplications. You come down here. And so you end up at 414 or 415. And this is what you would actually put on the package. So back here, back here to one, you would put that 414 calories, amount per serving, 414, 415. So that, that would get you through your, your uh, calories. You would do the same thing. You would take this times the next nutrient, and you do uh, you do them all. And the the examples that I gave you have all the answers. It has the answers not only for the raw; it also has the answers for cooked. So you can do either or. Um, check that out. If you get lost in the math, send me an email, and we'll try to figure out a time when we can talk about it. But it really is. You take you have to find the weight. You know your serving size. You know the percent of each one of those ingredients so you have to find your weight in grams and you take the the kilocals per one gram um you you would take the total lipids or fats per one gram so you would take this 39.95 take that times times the lipid and the the lipid weight or the lipid um lipids per gram and some things are going to end up zero you know salt has no calories in it salt has no fat in it so some things are going to end up zero anyway you're going to do that all the way through until you find your till you till you get to the end now here's what that that looked like on the raw ground beef and you have all of this so you can see it but the information uh Panel, all the required elements. Here's the ingredients list. Here's the nutrition facts. Um, 
And here's all the things that they would have that they they had to do at that point. A couple of things we talked about in the last one, HACCP are are is an important thing. Um, GMPs are important things to to talk about. These are all things you can talk about with kids about processing. So anyway, this is product development in a nutshell. The the product development rubric is going to look very very similar to the rubric that uh, is with that is with the example that I I gave you, I, and I will get that out so everybody can see it before the competition. Uh, but it is very very similar to that. The one that that's what I'm starting from is the one that you have, so you can see what it looks like. Um, the one that you have is. 300 points, this one will be 400 points, and there's a couple of things that I will make sure that are on there. Um, and so, anyway, that's that's what I'm I'm looking at. If you have more questions, please uh, please send me a, an, an email. If we can't work it out on email and some questions, just it's not possible. We'll find time to, to talk on the phone or to do a Zoom meeting or do one of these meetings so that we can, can get it worked out. So, anyway. That's product development in a nutshell. Again, it's one of my favorite things to do. And uh, if you have questions, let me know. Now, Chad, we, we have a product development. Uh, the, the Food Science CBE used to be a two-day event at State, and now it's, we're going to knock this out in one day. It starts on Tuesday of convention at 1 o'clock, and we have a session uh, that starts at 5.30. So, so I'm going to... I'm a little ignorant on, on knowing all the rules. You have to forgive me. We're going to have about an hour to do this product development. Yes, you will have an hour to do it. And so we're going to split the teams in half. Half the teams will go do product development first. Uh, and and the other half of the teams will go do the individual portions first. And then um, after an hour, we'll switch them. There's probably going to be about a 10-minute overlap there where we finish up with one. Uh, and so – by the time we give instructions in product development, I'm allowing 10 minutes for that. The individual portions are going to have about 70 minutes to get through there. And so um, I, I think it's going to work out real slick. Your, your team should be um, more or less done two and a half hours is, is what I want to have them done. And then uh, we, we will open it up and let everybody uh, come visit about it right after that. Okay, good. That, that was another thing because um, I know we want to use this as an opportunity to build our teams uh, within our state to build food science in the state. And so that that review is going to be huge. And I know our teachers are looking forward to that. The, right. the product development you just showed us is a national level product development. There's a lot going on there. Um, I'm not saying that the state level one will be uh, watered down, but surely we won't have quite as it won't be quite as complex, right? As far as the number of ingredients and uh, um, can you so, give us a, a hint on or, or an idea of, of the differences right. from what we saw today and what that want to look like in June? So what I really think, I really believe it's going to be very similar. Um, okay. But I'm, I'm going to give you choices. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to tell you that if you put something in, this is the, this is the percentage you're going to put it in. I'm not going to have you at nationals. At Nationals, they don't even give you those percentages. All they do is say, here's the ingredients you can use, and here's the, here's how much those uh, nutrients are per 100 grams of those ingredients. And so we are not going to do it that way. We, it's going to be – you're going to make choices. And I'm going to try to limit the choices to under five. So five decisions. You may have to, you may have to make five and then put your product together. I'm not even concerned – so much with did I put the right things together? It's like the raw versus cook. Um, I don't. I. I would go. I could. I can defend either one of those, <clears throat> and I can. I can go after either one of those. But but the what I care about is can you defend yourself on it? Do you? What is your reasoning behind using? I don't know raw. Why why would you use raw? Why, you know, my, my question immediately, if you're going to use raw, is um, we don't want to get anybody sick. How am I going to protect my company from, from sick? What is your reasoning? You're taking a chance with that raw ground beef. So how, what are you going to do to make sure that 
And why are you doing that? And the answer to that is, and, and this is something that just the answer to that is, is because moms want, moms want that, want, want to do, they want to feel like they're cooking. That's one of the things we said in there, want to feel like they're cooking. So, so I need to, I need to cook that ground beef. Okay. okay. I also want that fresh about, flavor. Let's talk about that defense because in our rules, it says we have a 10 minute presentation we have decided not to add that because of our shortness of time. So we're going to ask written questions with the team activity, and that'll count for the 10-minute the presentation, right? So when you're saying defend, it'll be in the form of a written question. Right. It's going to be it's going to be uh, kind of open in the questions. Tell me everything you know. Uh, tell me tell me why you did this. I, m- mostly, I'm not trying to catch your students in a you know. Oh, I'm a, oh. Why did you make that decision? No, I want to hear. I want to hear what your thought process was, because a lot of this stuff, there's no, there's no right or wrong. I mean, look at the food products. Why did they, you know, why did they make bacon pop? I don't know. That just sounds nasty to me. But there are people that drink it. So what? When I'm sitting in there and trying to make a decision, am I going to use maple bacon, or am I going to use um, hickory smoked bacon? There's probably not an exact right answer on that. Probably you're going to have to have some sort of defense on, uh, you know, what were you thinking on this? What I really want to know is what, what your thinking was. I, I'm going to use that, those questions, because, <clears throat> I mean, honestly, we make these decisions, we put the PDP together, and if you saw me draw something, you would go, I don't, do these things go together? So really, it's about, I'm, I'm just trying to explore what, what, what you're doing, why you did it, not necessarily right or wrong answers as long as you have good reasons for what you did. Okay. On the math, uh, is there partial credit on the nutrition label? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh gosh. And, uh, so I will tell you that, that we have, here's how I organize my team. Uh, we have one person that's going to be the artist and do the drawings of the PDP. One person's going to be in charge of answering questions and one person's going to be doing the math. And then the fourth person we call our swing man, they're going to be, they're going to be doing, um, they're going to jump in wherever they're needed. So if they need, if they, if the person doing um, calculations gets behind or they, they say, I'm not hundred percent sure I need to spot check this, then, then they're going to jump in and they're going to spot check. it. Okay. Um, you and I have discussed this. I think we covered it in the, uh, in the webinar today, but we will not be putting ingredients together in a package. It'll all be on paper. That will be the product development. And, um, yes, we're and of that. Use use the one that we've that we've given you that we're talking about this lasagna one. Use it to train your team if they can handle that one, and they understand the laws. They understand what it goes on a PDP. They know how to do a net weight statement. They understand state the statement of identity. Um, so let's talk about lasagna. What's the statement of identity on that box? It should it should say something like. Um, a, a Italian beef lasagna or something, you know, something like that. It, it needs to describe what's in there. Um, so yes, it's it's going to be. Make sure you know the the things that we that that's in the PowerPoint. Make sure they know uh, the the statement of identity, how to convert from that four hundred or one thousand four hundred ten grams into uh, pounds and ounces, or just ounces, either one. Okay. Uh, you know, it's kind of up to them how they do that. But yes, it's um, that, that they're going to turn four things in. They're going to turn in a PDP. They're going to turn in a inf- information panel, including nutrition facts, but they will be given the nutrition facts panel. They're going to turn in a sketch of their package and they're going to turn in uh, their questions. And then all the other stuff they're going to turn in together. Now, my plan is. Now, the, the review right after, I'll tell you some of the things we were looking for, but honestly, we won't have started grading that stuff, so that we won't get that back right away. But but when we get done grading, my my plan is, is to give you back not only the scenario, give you a blank copy of the scenario, my plan is to also give you back what your students did. So you can take that home, and, you, and, it, and it's yours, um, and you can use that for a training aid. Okay. That's my um, point. Just thinking like an act teacher and watching the webinar, looking at the kilocalorie conversion, there were some decimal points there. It looks like information that uh, 
you're going to be given, correct? So whenever you find the grams per serving, you multiply that times the, the calorie conversion. That, that I'm assuming that will be given information. Right. Okay. So the, the kilocals per gram is given information. Okay, yes. good. Teams need a ruler. Do we need a ruler per kid or a ruler per team? A uh, ruler per team. So I'm, I'm hoping that when we do the, the I guess I was thinking that it, we're providing the, the pencils and the colored pencils and the colored um, uh, markers that we could provide rulers also. I'm going to make it pretty clear to the teachers because uh, you know this as a teacher, your kids may get personally connected to their colored pencils. They may have a set that they like. They may want to bring their own. That, I'm completely fine with that. I will have a box because in the state office, I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of markers and colored pencils. But if you've got a special set of colored pencils or a special ruler that you love, by all means, we want them to bring it. I'm not going to say, oh, you have to use my colored pencils. We will provide it, but I'm going to strongly suggest that the teams bring their own. Uh, do you need any more than two rooms? Two rooms do it? I don't think so. As long as we, as long as we have a, a room that's big enough, on the individual side, we want to have a room that's big enough to have two sets of the sensory, so two sets of aromas, two sets of triangle tests, and two sets of, <clears throat> excuse me, two sets of the customer complaint letters and two sets of the safety pictures. How much help do you need in terms of? Um, well, what I'm thinking about right now is that I will run the product development room and Angie will run the individual portion room. And so, um, and we'll have Grace and Eli there help set stuff up. Um, but I, I am going to need at least at least one person in the product development room to, to help just keep an eye on things. Okay. Um, it, it, that way, you, I'll try to get you two ag teachers per room. That'll be great. <clears throat> that'll be great. I, I mostly I I don't want Angie or I to be stuck if if we need to step over to the other room. You know, if she needs to come talk to me about something, I don't want her. I don't want her to have to make the decision to walk out of the contest and leave it unattended to to catch me, and and vice versa. I don't want. I, you know, if I need to step over and check on the individual portion, I don't want to have to. You know, I don't have to make that decision. So I just need a couple people who can help us collect things. When it comes right down to it, the the individual grading part is going to be a snap. The product development. Um, Angie and I will have to sit down and, um, yeah. and, and go through and it, cause it's a, you know, it's one per team, but, uh, we'll, we'll go through that and, uh, hopefully, hopefully by my, my hope. Well, don't forget, I've got that one meeting. I've got my state contest committee meeting, uh, here in Nebraska that I'm going to video conference into. So I'm going to take a time out from grading, um, and and spend about an hour and a half on that, and then come back to it. So we'll do the best we can. Cade, are, will we be able to leave those rooms available um, for for that review, even if it runs into the pre session? Time? Yeah, those rooms. We have nothing else. Let me look one more time. But I don't think we have anything scheduled to go in those rooms the rest of the day. Okay, so that won't be a problem, Jeff. Let me look before I promise you that. Hang on. Yeah, those rooms are open for the entire day. All right. Well, and I know this is going to be a learning experience this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm excited to do this. And I don't know. I don't know if you can tell by my videos because they seem boring to me. But I get excited about this stuff. I love food science. Well, it, it's a wealth of knowledge. I, I'm learning a lot just just by what you're presenting to us, it seems to uh, a lot of information that uh, in, in one package here with the labeling laws and the examples. I mean, to me, that's, that's huge. That's one of the reasons we wanted to bring you in because you have such a, a, a history, you know, a long background in it and you've, you've been through it several times and not only just the, the national FFA aspect, but the, the food science as a profession, as an industry, I mean, you dove, way deeper into this than just a contest and that's and i know that about you just because we go way back and, and that's really what i want i mean we want to build that industry we'll hopefully build a curriculum i know you're teaching it in your class we may have some people uh teaching a little bit of food science across the state but but with this more structured cde uh and and a huge learning opportunity 
to, to bring back to our classrooms. That's, that's the thing as the director of Ag Ed for me, I wanna see us bring this back into our classrooms, not just place 10th at the national level in a contest. Right. That's, that's what I appreciate about it and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you once again for taking time out of your day and, and losing your planning period to come in and, and help us with this. I know how precious that is to teachers, especially being May 3rd. I'm sure May 3rd, Nebraska can't be much different than May 3rd in Louisiana when it comes to uh, attention span and graduation season and whatnot. So I personally want to thank you for coming in and doing that. And I also challenge any of our teachers to, to reach out to this guy. If you're really training for this one and, and you've got a question, you get bogged down with some of this math. I know it may look intimidating to some, but there's got to be some out there that are, that are gunning for this one. And if you have any questions, I guarantee this guy will do whatever he can to go out of his way to help you. And so that's, that's absolutely true. And, and Dr. Smith, I got to show you, I wore, I wore my, I wore my, my crops team sweater today. Just I know if you can read that or not. See that I wore, I wore this for, for agronomy guys right there. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> just gotta, just gotta mess, you know, just gotta. I'll love yeah. I'm going to call the IT department and try to get this thing edited before the weekend so we can have it posted. Chad, if you'll email, email me those resources, we'll get that out to our guys this weekend as well. Okay, so you did send out, you've already sent out the product development uh, scenario, the the one that here, that's already been sent out. I will send, I'm going to send you the, the uh, PowerPoint um, immediately. Thanks a lot. So if there, but if there's questions, please let me know. Hey, do you got any questions? I'm good. We're going to provide you whatever you need to put the event on. As long as I just get a supply list and set up list, that's that's what I need. And I'm good to go. I'm working on these uh, aromas. I, I, didn't, I didn't get any feedback yet. Um, worst case scenario, can we go locally to the grocery store and get some aromas? If we had, I know you don't want to ship yours or, or fly them in on your plane. Well, worst case scenario, I would bring a set with me. Okay. I think I'm going to be able to get a set. I, I'm just got to make a phone call. I didn't, I didn't get a response well, from email, but we're going to do what we can. And the lady, the lady in, um, the lady in Oklahoma, I've, I've got a list. If, if they don't, you know, if the company doesn't want to do the, do the aromas, I, there's a lady in Oklahoma that has them. And for 150 bucks, you get a whole set. And it's, that's, that's reasonable. For what you get, I guess, in my opinion. So, um, if you know, if it's, I don't think it'll it, be a problem. I just gotta, we just gotta reach out to Ribus again, and and uh, okay, I don't, I don't think I'll, I'll have the aromas here. Don't, don't plan on. Hey, the, now another question. So, Ribus, are they gonna be, uh, are they gonna be there? You gonna, they're gonna have a rep at the contest. Okay, is, is Steve flying in? He, he's not gonna be there. He, he's a past state officer from Louisiana who sponsored this for a couple years. David said he's out of the country, so he's not going to be at convention. But he has said that he will provide things like the aromas. We just got to get in touch with him. That's that might be why I hadn't got a response from him since he's out of the country. I, I sent him a sent him an email about it, but uh, we'll we'll keep working on that part. We've got almost exactly a month to get a set of aromas. I'm pretty sure we can pull that off. Uh, and we need those vials. I, I've got a list of things here, Kate. Here's what I've got, Chad. I got cotton balls. I need Kleenex, I need water, I need 24 droppers and amber vials. Yep. So they can't look at the colors of the aromas and, and judge it by color. So we'll we'll work on that in the next month. And we'll we'll um, I'm sure me and you will talk before then, but but if not, have a good May and and, and remainder of your school year and, and safe travels coming down. All right. Well, well, we'll see you on the second, I believe, is when uh, is when when our airplane gets in. So, hopefully, we'll see you see you then. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good meeting you. Nice to meet you. Also, have a great day. You are the only participant.
You are the only participant. You have been disconnected from the meeting.